Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chaos Lord David, and tonight I'm going to bring you episode 2 of my playthrough of Digimon World 3. And uh, for the last episode, we uh, got down the basics of, uh, of the game, we entered the digital world, and we got our partner Digimon, we've done our first battle, and uh, just did another, just basically the tour of the Digimon lab. Excuse me, I got a little bit of stuff in my throat again. So without further ado, let us begin episode two. And as you can see, we saved back here at Oscar Inn. And uh, what we're gonna do right here is that we're gonna go down here, which will go us, take us underground. There's a couple stuff that we can do here um, before we go out of the city. First off, we can go down here in the in the sewers of Oscar City. And to get this item box, this is 300 bits. And uh, you may as well go ahead and uh, get this 300 bits whenever you come down here. It can be really helpful in uh, having uh, quite a bit of, quite a couple bucks to uh, help you start start off. Because um, when it comes to training your Digimon, you're gonna want to uh, stay out in the outskirts, pretty much in this first area outside the city, so that way you can. Uh, you can be close to the city, and that way you can heal your Digimon anytime you wish. And uh, so I just decided to do a couple more talking. Here's a little friendly Gilmon right here. And uh, to be honest with you, I think Gilmon's probably one of my all-time favorite Digimon from, uh, uh, well, basically overall. But I think uh, in terms of Season 3 Digimon, he's my favorite. But if you ever see him in the anime or overall in the, yeah, basically in the anime, if you, he he was awesome in the anime because I liked how playful a Digimon he is. Even though whenever you look what, whenever you look at him, you, you may think that he's not very playful at all. He's a very deadly Digimon, but yet he's really playful. I mean, just just think of uh, whenever you see the uh, first episode, I believe, of season three where uh, Takato uh, first meets Gilmon, and then Gilmon was going. Like, Hey, Gilmon. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> anyway, we come here in the Yellow Cruiser. We here we talk to this Dyramon saying, talking to us about card battle. If you remember from uh, uh, battling uh, after the victory of uh, against Tamer Genji, he mentioned to us about a folder bag. This is where we get the folder bag full of uh, 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 getting card folders. Now, if you were to take this. Um, this is basically digital card battle within Digimon World 3. But if you compare the card battles in this game, if you compare it to this, to digital card battle itself, digital card, I mean, they're both fun, but digital card battle, I think, is a, a bit more fun, in my opinion. But, uh, unfortunately, we don't go through uh, card battles in this episode. I thought I'd wait and, uh, until I give me a couple more, until I advance a little bit within the game so I can get better cards. I think I really like it. I I find this music very very good. Now, if you remember from a uh, from me playing Digital Car Battle, some of these songs in the in the game will actually come from uh, from Digital Car Battle, and this this song is one of them. But and if you remember the song uh, whenever we went into the uh, inn, that that song's on Digital Car Battle too. But in case if you guys were wondering about me if doing the uh, second second half of Digital Car Battle, I'll do it. Probably as soon as I ever get done with this playthrough. Either whenever I'm uh, getting at least halfway through this game or after I get done with this game. Because I'm trying to at least keep my stuff organized. So as you can see, we just uh, got done witnessing how car battles were played on here. And uh, we got uh, three card folders. But like I said, I don't do any card battles in this episode. I wait until I advance a little bit within the game to get better cards. It's probably best that you do that. Because you have pretty weak cards to start off with. And, uh... Excuse me for staying there for a little bit. I had to pull out my strategy guide. 
because it helps. I mean, well, if you weren't using game facts and if you had a strategy guide, it's pretty good to use. And uh, the uh, place that is by the Yellow Cruiser, we can't go in there yet. So you can say that place is more like a fan club. We have to wait until we're uh, until we've advanced through the game a little bit in order to gain it, in order to be able to enter there. Jeez, my throat's bothering me a lot. Well, so now, um, as you can see, after I've saved, uh, Gilmon still has 60 HP from that last fight. So we're, I decided to uh, go ahead and just uh, heal him because we're gonna be, there's gonna be plenty of fighting in the, in this episode. This is basically what this episode is about. Lot of, lot of fighting. Because that's basically what you're gonna need to do before, whenever you advance in the game. Because uh, it's bet whenever you go out right outside the city at the, uh, you you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. But I assure you, some of these enemy Digimon that you fight against will pretty much be overpowered for even even at your Digimon level. Some enemy Digimon from at the start of the game can be pretty overpowering, so you, it's best that you watch yourself. And it's not this area. This area is where you first started countering enemy Digimon here in the Central Park. Now it's sort of like, like, like I said, it's sort of like playing Pokemon, except to, to find wild Pokemon you um, run in the grass, but wild Digimon can come out of anywhere. And uh, where that Leomon is, that's a training gym, but the only way we can do it, use the training gym, is that after we gain levels, we get uh, training points. That's how we can use it. Okay, so here's our first wild Digimon battle. Here we have a Kunamon. And uh, what I don't like about... I mean, the, probably the sad part about this game is that you can't catch Digimon. I may have already said that. I mean, because that's the only thing that is um, Pokemon-like that is not on this game. Because in any of the other... Some of the other Digimon games, you can catch Digimon. And I may have said this but in the uh, first first episode, I will mainly be training my Geomon, because that's basically the only Digimon I ever bother training. But if I feel like it, I may train Kumamon and Potamon. But I, just, I would just like to have just one Pokemon be a good offensive Pokemon. Excuse me, what am I talking about? A good offensive Digimon, excuse me, to have him as my as my leader of the party. I have no idea what's happened to me. Maybe it's because I'm getting a little tired since it's a uh, four minutes to midnight. And here we have our second wild Pokemon, Taper Tappermon Tapiermon. Now, if you remember from season four, I sometimes don't like how they pronounce. They give different names to other Digimon. Whenever you watch the anime, but. Tapiermon in the anime is really called Baku Bakumon. And now Geomon has reached level two. Now sort of now whenever you raise levels, of course you would gain uh, stats like in many other games. And, uh, for fighting wild Pokemon at this are <laughs> Why am I getting so confused? Why am I getting so scrambled with this? I mean, it's just like I said. This game is basically sort of like the Pokemon game of a Digimon. And di Pokemon slash Digimon game. Now, I really apologize for getting this all mixed up, but... In terms of fighting wild Digimon at the start of the game, it's best that you start, start here at the central... You keep fighting here at the Central Park until you at least get to level four, because uh, whenever you go into the, some of the other higher areas or areas outside of the Central Park, there could be quite a couple of tough Digimon, even some other rookie-level Digimon that can be quite overpowering. 
for it for this early in the game. You'll see what I mean later whenever we get to that look, whenever we get to that bridge. And uh, sometimes ambushes can happen. I mean, it, it just depends on what your, the speed that your Digimon is. See, yeah, that's the reason why um, you may as well go ahead and just try to finish him off and be, and be extra careful in fighting wild Digimon here in this early in the game, because that kind that was kind of powerful, even though it was 58. It may it may kind of seem very overpowering to such rookie level Digimon. You may be thinking, why? How could how could that be? It was like I thought that tap your mom was gonna do like 25 damage but really they get some of these Digimon can be very overpowering he's like oh that Digimon is so overpowered <laughs> no really and this is my first mess up right here Kunamon actually got a uh, faster than I er yeah Kunamon actually uh, KOs Gilmon right here since uh, that physical attack wasn't enough this is the reason why you should be extra careful. Right here. I was pissed when that happened. I was really pissed. And I kept saying, this, these Digimon are so overpowered over and over again until I, until I KO'd this Kunamon. I was pissed. Well, I guess you can say I got a little bit of experience for Kumamon or Bearmon in the anime. Because if you saw, if you, uh, some of you watched season four, Kumamon was Tommy's, uh, uh, human spirit. And, uh, for KO Digimon, they will be, uh, after a battle, they will be revived with one HP. Which is a pretty, pretty cool feature. Since you don't have to worry about using revives after a battle. Basically, you can only use revives during a battle. So yeah, that's why it's it's best that you go ahead and use attacks like Pyrosphere to start off until you get a good physical attack. Because physical attacks won't be enough. You won't do one-hit KOs every at this early in the game. Basically, the time whenever you uh, get uh, rely on physical attacks to do one-hit KOs. Basically, whenever you get a Digimon's first Digivolution. And, uh, this is basically what this whole episode is. Just training and training until I got a uh, Gilmon's first Digivolution. And there are some mistakes that I, or I wouldn't say mistakes, but some stuff, some stuff that I could have done a bit quick a bit, to make this episode a bit quicker, but I just try to be careful. Because that's basically what this game is, at this early point in the game is about, just trying to be careful. Since you have, um, since some of these Digimon can be, still can be overpowered. And uh, not Pyrosphere can really do that damage all the time. Maybe I just got lucky and got critical hits. Now Gilmon just reached level 3. Now we can at least withstand a couple more attacks now. But like I said, uh, it's best that you just stay here in the Central Park. Until one of your Digimon is at least level 4. I mean, just to play it safe. Because I am getting tired. I have no idea why. Maybe it's because I. Maybe it's because it's uh. I keep at, I keep thinking, why did fall break? Why did my two days off go by so fast? And yeah, I do have to go back to college. Uh. uh well, since it's now 12:03 a.m. here, I guess I. I suppose I can say I have to go back to college today. Bummer. 
But oh well. I mean, at least it's uh, getting close to being halfway through the semester. I mean, I can't believe how quick it is. Has that uh, become to October now? I mean, I really can't wait till Christmas so I can get a a couple good bugs and at least try to give me a good capturing device. What do you guys think I should get? Maybe try to get the... Well, since I already got a regular capturing device, maybe I should try to give me a capturing device I can live stream. I mean, like I said, I don't have uh, unlimited internet, which is a shame. Since, uh... I can't, I can't just stay on the internet all day. I mean, that's basically how I'm stuck doing... I'm stuck here doing... I'm stuck here in the house, uh most of the time, and I'm still trying to give me a job, or still trying to find opportunities to go to friends' houses. But this is basically all I can do, just make playthrough parts, and just and commentate, and just watch YouTube. But stuff like streaming videos, I can't do all the time, because whenever our internet bill comes by, and if I, um, uh, if I go over the uh, memory limit of our internet plan, out, my uh, parents would have to pay extra. That's that's the reason why. I really wish we would be able to get unlimited internet. Cause if that if we can if I can do that, that means I could live stream whenever I want to. And not have to worry about paying extra. But for now I guess it's safe to just do at least one live stream per month. If I had a live streaming device. But I'm probably going to take uh, the advice of Wicked Shrapnel's video saying that the a Aver Media Broadcaster HD was the one that the one day uses for live streams and if it's if it's a really good capturing device then with not that many problems as the Roxio does I mean I'm not sure what if the Roxio Game Capture Pro HD has any problems but I just recently saw a review of it and it got an 8 out of 10 but um I mean, it may look good, but I just I'm just thinking I should just go with uh, the Broadcaster HD if it's if it's one of uh, many many professionals' thoughts of the uh, the capturing device that people should that um I'm not sure if some people would call me an expert commentator, but since I'm not really since I'm not a beginner anymore, I guess that's what uh, that's what I should get the product of Broadcaster HD since uh, a review says that the rock mainly rock shell products are used for beginners. I mean that does make sense, but I just thought I was just going to get this and just give me a good capturing device instead of just having to use a camera all the time. And uh, since I had to pay I think seventy bucks for this because I know it was a the original price was a hundred and, and it had the uh, save save 30 save 30 bucks off of it so I got it for at least 70 to 70 so now Gilman went to level 4 and it's oh and it's uh, at least okay to go into the other to go outside the Central Park to go to fight tougher Digimon I mean but it's still okay to fight here in the Central Park just to play it safe because some of the Digimon outside of the Central Park can be pretty tough and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next two Digimon that we can uh, next two wild Digimon that we can face. And here we are at the Wire Forest entrance. The Wire Forest entrance basically has the same Digimon as uh, the, one in, the ones in the Central Park, like Tapirmon and Kunimon. But as the game progresses, the Digimon will, uh, wild Digimon will, new wild Digimon will be, uh, will be on the field. And see what I mean of uh, physical attacks not being enough? You would have to, uh, uh, raise your Digimon stats in order to ensure that physical attacks will get the job done instead of just having to use a signature move, signature technique all the time. And what I just did is that you can evade, you can evade uh, attacks on there. And evading, evading attacks can be probably the biggest troll on here, on here, on, on the game. Probably one of the biggest trolls you'll ever hear on this game. I assure you, because, uh, Whenever you fight some of the tougher Digimon, they will evade a lot, and it will be very a huge annoyance to uh, to you. I assure you, trust me, because it is an it has annoyed me quite a bit. 
every time I hear repeated evade after evade after evade after evade that sound can get can get pretty trolling after a while but um, I'm not sure if this really does does anything but whenever a Digimon is about to attack me most of the time whenever I press X the dig my Digimon evades but not all the time I'm not sure if uh, evade evasion is random but I just thought that most of the time after I press X, it kind of helps a little bit. As soon as that Digimon attacks, attacks you. I mean, I always feel like I'm happy every time I hear this music. Because I think uh, Bandai did a really good job in making this music. Or, they did a good job on this game overall. Because I was really happy when I first got this game. I was like... I sure did make a right choice. But uh, the reason why I want this this week to go by fast is that I can still get allowance on Fridays. I get about at least ten dollars allowance, which is pretty good for an allowance money. And the f this new friend of mine I just recently made asked me to uh, go and get to a gig Tekken 6 for the PS3 so I can challenge her. Yes, it's a her. I mean, hey, I respect that. And so now we're in the Westwire Forest. And of course, Akunamon ambushed me again. And so now they're not really that tough since Akunamon did 44 damage. But Akunamon's, of course, not one of the new wild Digimon that we'll be going up against. Or at least not not really that tough anymore. What I could have done is I could have stayed here in the, in the wire forest or one of the other areas that are going to be in this episode uh, to f to battle against the tougher Digimon so I can gain experience faster and not have to worry about using that much MP. And so now we got our first equipment item, a buckler. And uh, it's best that you go ahead and get this buckler to start off and uh, increase your defense. So you can stand up to more attacks. I sometimes get mixed up uh, going into uh, items or items and status because status is whenever you can uh, set your digivol digivolution and uh, equip your Digimon. I kind of wish I would have a microphone instead of this headset, because I don't want. I'm getting a little tired of just having to uh, I get into a comfy position all the time. Plus, I will be able. Probably, I will be able to use a microphone if I were to do live commentary instead of just having to commentate after I do the gameplay. And here we have our first new wild Digimon named Betamon. Now, Betamon is really one of the mo one of the overpowered Digimon that you at the start of the game. I get lucky. I mean, I assure you that that electric shock attack he does is pretty strong for for a rookie level Digimon at this at this point. And luckily, he doesn't hit me with them. And he gives pretty good XP at this t at this point. He gives 10 XP plus 25 bits, so it's pretty good. And every time you go into the center here in this area, you will always encounter a Kawagamon here. Yes, it is our old pal Kawagamon that we met in the first part against Tamer Genji. Except these Kawagamon are a bit stronger than what uh, Genji had. And Kawagamon is uh, a, a not too much stronger than Betamon, but still very powerful at this point. And uh, Kawagamon give 11 XP, but give 20 bits. It's kind of funny how Digimon, a stronger Digimon that gives more XP, but gives less bits. It's pretty weird, in my opinion. And what I should have done is what I, I should have stayed here and I fought the Betamon and Kawagamon, but I just... I thought I would just be best to uh, play it safe and just... Uh, uh, go to some of the other areas while I can fight some Kunimon and uh, Tapirmon. 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 I think both of them make sense. 
but for now I'll call him Tapirmon. Because of most of the Digimon games, and uh, I mean, I'm really—I was really upset when I saw that you couldn't catch a uh, wild Digimon. Because in most of the Digimon games, you can get uh you get mainly the rare, more rare Digimon. You know, like Kunimon, for instance. Because if you, if you played the first Digimon World, you can get a uh, Kunimon. Also second Digimon world. Now that place leads up to uh, a different area with the same Digimon, uh, Betamon and Kawagamon. But I just thought I remember going up this, just going on this terrain with bringing the tougher Pokemon instead. <laughs> so there we go again, the tougher Digimon, like Betamon and Kawagamon, instead of just keeping the old Kunimon and Tapirmon. Yeah, once again, I really apologize for for mixing up Pokemon and Digimon. I mean, just like like I said, if, if you if you play this game, it makes you feel like you're playing Pokemon. I mean, I recently played Pokemon Battle Revolution. I mean, like I think I said this before, but Battle Revolution I think is pretty good in terms of multiplayer. And see, here's Betamon again. Fortunately, fortunately, through all the Betamon I've encountered in this episode, neither of them was able to win an attack on me, so I was pretty fortunate. And uh, for now, you're going to want to keep using Pyrosphere, or your Digimon signature move, but of course, Gilmon's Pyrosphere. To ensure that you'll be able to KO that KO Betamon, because Betamons are pretty tough. If you see, if we come down to this boy here, we will trigger a side quest in the game. One of the side quests. Of course, you can't go wrong with RPG games having side quests. And this guy is uh, kicking the trees. Because Digimon, Digimon called Cardmon are in trees. And uh, just by just by the name Cardmon, they speak for itself. Cardmon are Digimon that drop booster packs. And uh, booster packs of uh, different cards. And they can, they can uh, sometimes uh, drop pretty rare cards. But the silly thing is that whenever you have booster packs, the only way you can get them to open is whenever you visit a, di whenever you talk to a Divermon. Pretty gay, in my opinion, because the only that's the only way you can open up booster packs in this game. I mean, why not just open the booster pack? Why not just have the character open the booster packs? Anyone can open a booster pack. Heck, even a three-year-old could open a booster pack. If he knew how to. Does does Junior not even know how to open a booster pack, or what? I mean, what the heck? That's what... That's probably one of the silliest things I've... I've saw in this game, but... Still, I couldn't really argue. I still, still, I couldn't really debate on it too much. But for now, uh, in order for us to find out how we can get the kicking boots, we have to find uh, um, Hyde's Gabumon card. And the Gabumon card is, of course, in the city. But I decided to just go ahead and get to uh, get Gilmon's first uh, Digivolution before we go back into the city. Because, like I said, it's it's safe to go and uh, get your partner Digimon's first first Digivolution in order to go out farther than where I've been. And if we go down here, well, not yet, anyway. I mean, but like I said, yeah, I could have made this episode a bit quicker and a bit shorter by uh, uh, battling the uh, uh, Betamon and Kawagamon. but I just. Uh, didn't want to leave the side quests out, that's why I had to fight a couple more Kunimon and Tapirmon. Jeez, oh, I really wish I needed to figure out how I can do less yawning. And it's 
It's kind of hard to believe that we're already at 30 minutes. Even commentating can make time go fast. I mean, but still, even though you're making this much progress, it's already been 30 minutes. And here we are at Shell, Shell Beach. Now, I believe if you uh, stay on this uh, area of the... Uh, area... This... Area in the area... <laughs> the area within the area... I believe Betamon will come out. We'll be will be in this field, part of the field. But if you're in the sand, a couple water type Digimon will be in there. So I tried to stay away from them since uh, it can be sort of like a Pokemon kind of deal. Since uh, Gilmon is more like the fire type or fire type or dragon type. Yet yeah, Gilmon is more like the dragon type, vaccine type. And uh, there are some, a couple of water Digimon, so I thought that have pretty good physical attack power. So it's it's safe to just go ahead and just try and try and at least stay away from the Digimon while on the beach. I may be mistaken if Betamon come out. I'm I'm pretty sure Betamon come out on the beach, but it's just safe to just stay on the land, on the grass. Now, what I, who I just talked to was a fisherman. If we give him the right stuff, he'll make us a fishing pole so we can uh, fish for other stuff in the in the seas and the water. Now the C's will have a Cardmon in there too, but I think uh, sometimes the uh, sometimes it just depends on what uh, what environment you're in. Uh, sometimes uh, most of the time, if you get a encounter a Cardmon, they'll drop and drop say like a booster one lower one A pack and the C. Cardmon will drop a booster 1B. I'll 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 try to explain that in a better way once we get to those, because it's just safe not to go ahead and just heart hunt for uh, Cardmon at this point, because Cardmon are really tough actually. Because whenever Cardmon attacks, it'll actually sometimes it'll actually excuse me, majority of the time it'll it'll put a curse on your status. Basically, it'll lower your status for for a little while, and and it'll be it'll stay there for a while even when you're not in the battle it'll stay there so let's take uh, Gilmon's 84 84 physical attack strength at this point if I got hit by a cardmon if it said strength decreased it would probably be cursed down to about 81 or 80 and the uh, number will be highlighted in purple saying that it's cursed and it'll stay that way throughout the uh, uh, from time to time until it goes back up, which pretty sucks. But it, it's I mean it you can't really argue about it since uh, Cardmon actually like to flee. So sometimes you have to be extremely lucky to defeat a Cardmon. But like I said, I'll explain more in depth of Cardmon uh, whenever we get to them. And uh, even though it's only been 33 and a half minutes, it was just like we could have made a lot more progress than, than this time. But I mean, yeah, like in most other games. But in this game, it's really it's more like trying to play safe because a lot of these Digimon, like I said back in the start of this video, they can be really overpowered at this point. So it's safe to just go and get your be as strong as you can ever strong as you can get. And we finally got Gilmon to level 5, and we got Gilmon's champion level form Digivolution, Growlmon. Now, every Digimon partner gets a Digivolution at levels 5, 20, and 40, with champion levels, ultimate levels, and mega levels, respectively. Now, you can get different, many different Digivolutions from the Digivolutions that you gained. Like, for instance, if I were to... Uh, I use Growlmon and get him at a certain level. He can learn a new Digivolution. And we will be able to turn on Battle Digivolve. And since Growlmon's name is highlighted in blue, we can now uh, battle as Growlmon without having to uh, uh, Digivolve Gilmon. Uh, without having to Digivolve Gilmon in every single battle. But whenever you encounter a Digimon that has 
whenever it says ambush before it starts before it starts the battle, it'll go it'll go to directly to Gilmon and you would have to digivolve into the Digimon you wanna be. But since we since uh Grauma, I turned uh, Graumon's battle digivolution on. Every time we go into a battle we'll be fighting as Graumon. But uh that that was the end of the battling. Now we go in, now this is our first visit in the shop. Uh, Wizardmon will sell items. Gomamon will sell pawns, basically like accessories, like rings and stuff like that. Wizardmon will have like recovery items. And Gargamon will deal will be the armory. Will sell armory like weapons, like as you can see right here. Now this is part of the fishing pole side quest. You're gonna want to buy a bamboo spear because the because the bamboo spear will serve as the pole. We will get the two other parts in later in the game. Not very late. We can get them at this point if we wanted to, but at a later part anyway. And uh, whenever you push the circle button, when it shows details, it'll show who can be equipped with it and, and what stats will go up. It's a pretty handy feature. And I just like how they named the uh, shop after my last name. I mean, it's like there are too many Smiths in the world and too many Davids in the world. So I basically have one of the common names. <laughs> so that's um, oh not yet. Now the go now to find the Gabumon card it is right here between these two blue, two blue papers on the lower lower level. That's where the Go Gabumon card is. But that's gonna do it right here after I uh, make my Digimon rest in the inn. That is gonna do it for this episode. Accessing Matrix Drive. Prepare to save. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's how Gargermon really says it, but even though they're rope, they're machine type virus Digimon champion level. But if you remember watching season three of Digimon, that's not what that was. That was not how Gargermon acted. Gargermon was like a uh, sort of like the. I'm not sure how you can describe it, but he was like he had a voice sort of like this. You sure you want to go up there? Uh, are you sure you're gonna be fine up there? <laughs> sort of like that. But yeah, like I said, that's gonna do it right here. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. And the next episode, we will go farther outside of Oscar City. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, take it easy.